Hopefully we're good now. Well, good morning. Um, it is 8.03 on Monday morning. Hope you had a uh, good weekend. Some craziness in our world, for sure. And um, yeah, it's a crazy weekend, right? Lots of things going on, lots of craziness. And, uh, you know, we need God more than ever today, I think. So uh, we're going to dive in. Ephesians uh, chapter 3. We're going to look through the first uh, 13 verses of Ephesians chapter 3. So uh, verse 1 says this. It says, For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for the sake of you Gentiles, surely you have heard about the administration of God's grace that was given to me for you, that is, the mystery made known to me by revelation, as I have already written briefly. Um, so Paul reminding the Ephesian church uh, that God has bestowed this grace and this mystery upon him uh, through the revelation that happens on the Damascus Road. Um, you can read about that in Acts, um, early part of Acts. I don't remember the chapter off the top of my head. Um, the mystery made known by the to me by revelation. So the, just letting uh, them know again that he knows he has had this encounter with God. He's on mission because of what God has uh, called him to do. And then verse 4, in this reading then, you will be able to understand my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed by the Spirit to God's holy apostles and prophets. And so he starts talking about this mystery of Jesus and how it has been uh, made known to prior generations, prior um yeah, prior generations uh, through the Spirit of God and the prophets. And he continues in verse 6, This mystery is that through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel, members together of one body, and shares together in the promise in Christ Jesus. And so this mystery that he's talking about in these verses is that the Jewish people uh, were under the impression, um, not under the impression, this is what, they knew what, um, I guess maybe what was explained to them, uh, that they were the chosen people of God, and thus no one else is the chosen people of God. If that makes sense. Um, if you are, if you're chosen, then that's you. You that's who. Um, the chosen people are you, right? Like, um, but now after Jesus. The family expands. The nation of God expands. It's not just the global, uh, the territorial Israel. It is everyone: Gentiles, Jews, uh, men, women, free, slave. You know all of the things that Paul talks about in a different spot, other than this. And so that's the mystery that they that um, through the gospel, the Gentiles are heirs together with Israel. Um, again, using that language that he has so far, uh, this uh, language of inheritance and sonship and um, adoption. And he's saying, you know, that the people who, Paul being a, a Jew, people who we thought were out are actually now in with us. And this is a mystery that we don't get, but God is making it clear. Um, and I think for us as primarily Gentiles, um, we should be super thankful for this, right? Like, this is the, had we not, had this not happened, we don't get accepted and adopted um, because we're not Jewish. Um, some of you who are watching this may be, but for the majority of us, we're not. And so we would not have a claim to any adoption, claim to any inheritance, claim to any heir of Christ, because we, we just aren't Jewish. Um, but it's also a reminder, it's a reminder to the original hearers of this letter that everyone is part of the, the family of God. Everyone is loved and is as important to God as the original nation, right? Um, so as the readers of this letter Lots of years later, us, um, that's a good reminder for us too, 
that um, that the that the opportunity to serve, to follow, to have Jesus as Lord of your life is open to everyone. Um, and that we as humans don't really get to make the call as to who is in and who is out. Um, yeah, we just, it would have been, this This would have rattled some cages um, in Paul's day. Probably doesn't rattle ours, ours as much, but we need to keep that in mind that we, um, that we just don't get to make the call everyone um everyone is invited to know jesus to follow jesus to be changed by jesus to be on mission for jesus and so it doesn't it doesn't matter how i feel about a certain person or certain group um we're all we're all uh called we're all open there's this opportunity for all of us to um, to follow God. So, um, yeah, verse 7, he says, I became a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace given me through the working of his power. Although I am less than the least of all of the Lord's people, this grace was given me to preach to the Gentiles the boundless riches of Christ and to make plain to everyone the administration of this mystery, for which for ages past was kept hidden in God who created all things. And so Paul's laying it out here saying, you know, he, he has, is the servant who has been given this uh, uh, servant of this gospel, the gift of grace that God has given him, and that he is the least of all God's people. He is the lowest, um, but yet God still gives him this grace to preach to Gentiles the boundless uh, riches of Christ. And so um, Paul is just on mission. And this is what he's going to do. He's going to go out there and he's going to tell people about who Jesus is. And um, that that's what, what he's at after. Verse 10, he says, his intent being God was not, was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms according to to the eternal purpose that he accomplished in Christ Jesus, our Lord. His intent was that now, through the church, so the church has a massive, massive, massive job to do. It is our job uh, to make the world know, know uh, of God's wisdom in this moment and what he has done through Christ Jesus. I mean, he says his intent was that now through the church, the church has this mission. This, if you consider yourself a follower of Jesus, and I would hope that you consider yourself part of a church and that you are, um, you're on mission. You don't, there's not a lot of choice in the matter. When we follow Jesus, like that, that's what we sign up for, um, is to be on mission. In verse uh, 12, he goes on and he says, in him and through him, uh, in him and through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. I ask you, therefore, do not be discouraged because of my sufferings for you, which are your glory. Um, so in verse 12, he says, in him and through him, through faith in him, we may approach God with freedom and confidence. And what a, um, what a powerful reminder that that the throne of God is always open to us, that we can always go before his throne and pray and to bring our petitions to the God who created this universe. Let's like let that sink in for just a second. We can go before God with anything. And Paul says, you know, that um, in him and through him and through faith in him, so in Jesus and through faith in Jesus, we are able to approach God with freedom and confidence. Um, man, that's a big statement. It's a big statement 
that we would have that opportunity, that we would have that ability, that we that God would want to hear from us. Um, maybe today is just a really good reminder for us. And, you know, I mean, we all thought the crazy times were just going to be, um, that the crazy times were just going to be a pandemic. <laughs> and um, now it gets to be a pandemic and our nation just in a weird, crazy, hurting spot. Um, so maybe for us today, we need to be on our knees, uh, literally or figuratively, um, and with confidence going before God, just asking for intervention, asking for healing, asking for love, asking um, for peace, um, you know, asking for justice, asking for mercy, asking for all of the things that that um, it appears that only God is going to be able to do in the midst of all of this. Um, yeah. I, I think uh, let's just own that today. You know, let's just, uh, let's just really lean into the fact that we can go before the throne with confidence and bring our petitions to God. And, you know, let's just do that. Let's just spend the day on and off uh, talking with God, um, you know, praying for our own situations, praying for our nation, um, whether, uh, yeah, just wherever you feel led. I just think there, there's, as God's people, we need to do that. We need to um, be in prayer. And so, um, you know, let's just do that. When we find a down moment, let's just ask God. Let's just petition him for mercy and for justice and for peace and for love and unity and harmony. And um, let's do that. Let me pray for us. Um, God, we we are thankful and humbled by the fact that we can approach your throne. And so, God, we don't do that lightly um, in this moment. But, Father, I would ask that we would remember that we can do that at all times um, and that you... Uh, have such a love for us that you want your your children talking to you and interacting with you. And so, um, God, would you help us remember that today? God, would you help us when we see something that shocks us, disturbs us, moves our hearts? Would you just let us be a people who would pray today um, just to engage with you, to talk with you, to ask you for the things that, that we need and the things um, that we know that only you can do? God, would you help us to just be a people uh, who can love our neighbors and who can um, be salt and light in this world? God, I would ask that um, you help us to never forget that you can handle our anxieties and our depressions and our fears and our concerns and our worries. Um, all of the things, our, our hates, our anger, we can, you can, you can handle all of those things. And I would just ask that. Uh, this morning, maybe we, you would help us remember to put those down. Let the, let them sit at your feet. Let you do with those things that you will, and let us just embrace you, lean into you, love you, um, develop a better relationship with you. God, we love you. Uh, we just thank you for Jesus and his, his example on the cross, his uh, ministry on this earth, and um, his obedience uh, even through death. God, we thank you for all those things, and we just pray all these things in his powerful name. Amen. Uh, for those of you watching live, thank you um, again for doing so. I appreciate that. Uh, we'll be back right around 8 tomorrow. We will finish the second half of Ephesians chapter 3. Have a blessed day.